Producers, Pigments 5 just came out and here are my top five new features. By the way, it's a free update if you already have version four. A 100 brand new presets for version five, including new wavetables and samples for you to use. You now have aux pre or post effects routing, multi-core processing for more CPU efficiency, and the two things that I'm gonna focus on in this video, which are the generative step sequencer and audio input so you can use pigments effects on any other instruments or samples from your collections. Let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so let's talk about the new sequencer. It's phenomenal. This track, I am 100% gonna finish this year whenever I find the time, but it has been 100% inspired by just using this random generative sequencer inside of Pigments 5. <laughs> We got the bass line. We've got this subdued sort of melody. We've got this tone that really sets the mood. And then finally, we've got these really gravy ear candy bits that are pretty much different every single time you go back to the beginning of the bar. You gotta love it. That's the DG DG generator and it sounds phenomenal, especially in conjunction with everything else. It's phenomenal. I know you want to get into the parameters here and what they do, but I just, I had to point that out. I am legitimately excited about it. I'm going to pull over the baseline here. And the way this works is it's like a lot of other generative sequencers. It works on probabilities and you can essentially randomize things at will. What we have here is one, we can choose some presets. We can go from the sequencer to the arpeggiator but we're going to focus on the sequencer. We got our playback mode, rate, swing, polymetry, and then reset, and we can choose how often things will reset. That's all pretty standard, so I'm not gonna go into any detail there, but this is where things start to get cool. We can choose the sequencer scale. We've got all of these to choose from, and we can customize our own if we want. These are the probabilities that any one of the notes will take place. For example, I want, and it says C here, by the way, but that is relative to the MIDI you have in your DAW. I am on a G. So C in this case is actually the G. And I can prove it to you. If you want to skip ahead, I'll leave a time code. But for, for me, this is pretty interesting stuff. So what I'm going to do is just put another MIDI in here. And I'm going to take the MIDI from that first pigments. I'm going to set it to N. I'm going to record. Uh, I'm going to record here. And I believe I've got to do pigments. You'll see here, this is the MIDI that's actually coming out of pigments. It's on G1. That's actually what is shown here. So this is C1 is actually G1, and that's because that's the MIDI I'm using to trigger it. I hope that makes sense. That might trip some people who are just getting into this sort of thing up a little bit in the beginning. So I just wanted to clear the air right there. It's also great to know that I can get that MIDI out and then go in and make some variations and some fills and work with it from there as well. That's all well and good. But now that I have that set up, I just chose natural minor because I'm looking for a G minor, right? And then I can just hit randomize and it's gonna give me a new baseline. Let's just listen to that in the context of the track. It's dope. Hit it again. It's dope. Hit it again. Now, if I don't want to hit it every time, I can actually just come in here and say every bar, right? Or every two bars, regenerate a new sequence. Okay. 
So if you set up your MIDI in or MIDI record, like I just showed you when we were verifying the scale, you can just do this, walk away, make a coffee, come back, and you will no doubt have a entire song, if not 12's worth of bass lines in the key to choose from. All right, so over here we have individual variation or in probabilities for pitch, on off state, velocity, octave, gate length, and slide. And we can come in and choose it on a, you know, per, what would you say, value for the entire sequence. So then we can actually come over on an individual slot basis. Depends on how quickly your sequence is going on what the value of that is. But we can turn it on or turn it off. We can actually come in and choose the note we want. And we have it on lock right now, which means it will skip over notes that aren't in the scale we've chosen, which is phenomenal. And then we can choose the probability on a per slot basis or per step basis that the note will happen. If I have 100% here, every time the sequencer loops around, it will 100% hit that note. So for something like a bass line, that might be something you want. Of course, it's up to you. For some of this kind of more busy part, I could set this down to a low probability. And that means that every time this loops around, there'll be, a, there'll be more of a chance that these notes don't happen. Let's see if it does. Let me go ahead and just solo it. Oh, I've got regen on, so I'm gonna turn that off. And you'll see that those probabilities stay the same. I'm just gonna come over and turn them on again. So you see that the first time it went through, they play, the second time it didn't. But that will happen differently every time you play through, and it's just based on the probability you set. So that probability function works the same way with the velocity, the octave, the gate, uh, gate length, and the slide. But anyway, that's just a quick look at the steps we can start. All right, everybody, let's jump into the details on how to get audio into pigments so you can process that audio using pigments built in incredible effects. I'm gonna show you how to do it with samples and how to do it with other instruments. First up, let's get a sample in here and I'm gonna be using this crash. Pretty stale, pretty abrasive, and we wanna get that audio into pigments. The first step is getting pigments ready to receive audio. I'm on a new preset. Boom. And right here on the synth page, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn off the engine. I don't wanna generate sound with pigments. I want to manipulate sound. That is found in the utility engine under the second noise module. I'm gonna choose audio input. As soon as I do that, it's gonna automatically turn on. Now it's ready to receive audio. So now in my DAW, I wanna send audio its way now that it's listening. In Ableton Live, that's incredibly easy. I wanna to go to the pigments channel, it's right here, and choose a sidechain source from the device container, and I'm just gonna choose that crash channel. Now I'm gonna mute the crash channel, and if I play the sound back now, we should see the audio input VU meter activate. And we do, but we don't hear any sound, and this is where people might get a little tripped up. What we need to do is actually have MIDI triggering the synth engine to affect the sound when it happens. Let me show you what that means. If I just take this MIDI right here, slide it over and play, we hear the cymbal or the crash exactly as we should. Now, if I slide this MIDI over like this, we're not gonna hear anything. The MIDI here is not going to trigger the sample. The sample will be heard anytime you have it, as long as there's MIDI playing. So we'll see no, yes, yes. Okay, that's important to know. It also doesn't matter what note you have here. So if I go up two octaves, the cymbal is still gonna sound exactly the same. It's not gonna pitch the cymbal, okay? The MIDI information on the pigments channel does not affect the sound. It only says whether or not we can listen to the sound from the synth. So now all we need to do is affect it. So I'm gonna come in here and just... And I think we can all agree that that symbol sounds a lot better. All of these effects processing it, they sound phenomenal and they weren't available in my DAW. Let's move on to instruments now. Now we're gonna send this instrument, which is Bloom Vocal Ether. It's a vocal chop instrument. Hold up, my love, feel it. Into pigments to use its effects. The same thing needs to be done. So I'm on the pigments channel here and I just wanna choose Bloom Vocal Ether. And I'm gonna go ahead and mute 
the Bloom Vocal Ether channel. You can see that it, the audio is happening, but we're not hearing it. Let's jump into pigments and it's already all set up for us, but let's just make sure the audio engines are off in the utility control. We've got audio in and if I play pigments, you can see that it's happening. It's getting the information, but we're still not hearing anything. And that's because we want to arm the channel. Now, again, this is somewhere where people might get a little tripped up. If I arm the channel now, I'm not gonna hear anything. So what I need to do is hold control and arm both channels. So now I will simultaneously be triggering MIDI to trigger my samples and be triggering MIDI to trigger the effects and pigments. Hold up. Cool? Hold up. My and it's that simple. So now I can either play that live or I can input my MIDI and it will be triggered just as if it were an instrument. Remember though, that the MIDI on the Bloom, the instrument channel, absolutely makes a difference to what audio comes out of that instrument. The MIDI on the Pigments channel does not matter. As long as it's on, we'll get the effect. Again, if I go up an octave, not gonna change anything. But if I move the MIDI position inside of the Bloom channel, it does make a difference. 